welcome to session two of our Clear Yoga practice. Now, before we get started, we need to warm up. Um, in the Clear tradition, remember that we have 18 postures in total. And in our first session, we did postures one to six, which included the Surya Chandra Namaskaram, and then also the Clear Vanakamasana. And the reason we practice the Clear Vanakamasana is to give thanks and reverence to the divine masters who have given us this beautiful technique. And we're going to repeat that posture today in addition to the six that we're going to do. And also we're going to do the sun and moon salutation as a warm up just to assist with getting the blood flow going. So, let's get started. Come to the center of the mat, heels together, toes apart, stand up straight, shoulders right back, relax, close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose and out your mouth. Breathe in and out and breathe in again and out. Heels together, toes apart and let's see. Place the crown of the head on the mat in front of you. Palms together in front of the head and raise your feet. Hold that position, breathe. Lower the feet, bring the hands to the sides, slowly raise the head and let's stand. Surya Chandra Namaskaram. Now just a reminder as well, it's not about perfection. It's a 24 step process, 24 step asana, and don't worry about getting your legs and rights muddled up as long as we're moving with the breath. Heels together, toes apart. Number one, palms together. Two, stretch up, lean right back. Three, fall forward. Four, right leg back. Five, left leg back down the dog. Six knees down, chin chest to the ground. Keep the buttocks raised, elbows tucking. Seven, stretching up into cobra. You can lift the knees off the ground if you wish. And eight, downward dog. Nine, right leg forward. Ten, left leg forward. Eleven, stretch up. And twelve. 13, 14, 15, left leg back, and 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, left leg forward, 21, 22, 23, and rest. Next round, moving with your breath. Number one, breathe in. Two, breathe out. Three, breathe in. Four, breathe out, right leg back. Five, breathe in. Six, breathe out. Seven, breathe in. Eight, breathe out. Nine, right leg forward, breathe in. Ten, breathe out. Eleven, breathe in. And twelve. Keep breathing. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen, left leg back. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. 
To question number seven of our Kriya tradition. This is called Vibhalita Kadani Asana, topsy turvy pose. It is a shoulder stand as well, so if you have any neck injuries, please be very careful when practicing this position. Um, yeah, also, any kind of back injuries, but we'll move into the position quite slowly. So, lie down on your back, raise the legs, bend at the knees, keep your spine flat on the ground. And rotate your ankles. Rotate in the other direction. Move the feet forward and back. And then side to side. Stop the motion, straighten your knees. Now, if you want to stay in this position, it's perfectly fine. You're more than welcome to. If you want to lift into the shoulder stand, breathe in, lift the buttocks, tuck your hands under the waist, tuck the elbows close together, keep the chin away from the chest, bend the right knee, place the right foot on top of the left knee, keep the right knee in line with the center of your forehead. If you can't get up into this position, you can keep your back flat on the ground, and just bend one knee. This is going to assist with strengthening your core. Now let's release your posture, breathe in and out, straighten up the right leg and move up to the left side. Bend your left knee, place the left foot on top of the right knee Keep the left knee in line with the center of your forehead. Turn away from the chest and breathe. Now breathe in and out, releasing breath. Breathe in and out, straighten up the left leg. Breathe in. As you breathe out, bend your knees slightly, roll your spine down and relax. Stretch the hands above the head, breathe out, swing forward, reach as far forward as you can, and stand. Moving into our counter pose, this is called Pati Minasanam, half fish posture. Come once again to the front of the mat, heels together, toes apart, lie back. Now in this position, keep your heels together and just allow your feet to relax to the sides, creating like a fish tail. Hands to the sides, press against your elbows, lift your chest as high as you can, squeeze the shoulder blades together, tilt the head back and slowly lower the head so that you can bring the crown of the head to the mat. Now the idea here is to try and look at the top of the mat. Keep your legs completely relaxed, keep your feet relaxed, and to complete the posture, place your hands on your thighs and the groin. Try to keep the elbows on the mat. Breathe. Now 
one more breath together. Releasing breath, breathe in. And as you breathe out, rest the hands to the sides, lower the chest, and relax. The legs and feet should already be relaxed, so don't worry about that. Breathe in. Now breathe in, stretch the hands above the head. Breathe out, swing forward, reach for your toes. And let's stand. Question number nine, this is called Kalapiyasana, it's a plow pose. Beautiful stretch, beautiful full body stretch actually. Come right to the front of the mat, heels together, toes apart, and lie down. Now in this position, we want to try and create a swift, one swift, easy movement. So we're wanting to, in one motion, lift the feet over the head and try to bring the toes above the head. Let's go, breathe in and out. Breathe in, feet up and over. Now in this position, do not move your head side to side, keep your head straight. Press the chin against the chest if you can, or if you can keep your chin away, that's also great. Now, a lot of people will sort of get to about this position, which is perfectly fine. Also, you may find that your knees will bend as well. That's also fine. So your focus will be then to just draw yourself down slowly over time to bring your feet to the ground. And then your next focus will be to straighten the knees. Now here, try not to let your arms flare out too much on the mat. If you need to have your arms out, that's fine. But over time, work toward getting your hands on the mat. And breathe. feet off the ground, bend your knees, slowly roll your spine down, and relax. Remember to offer your body thanks and gratitude for allowing you to enjoy this beautiful process. Now breathe in, arms up, breathe out, reach forward for your toes, and stand. Moving into our counter position, this is called Pambuasana Serpent Posture. So in this pose, we're going to go right to the back of the mat. Again, starting heels together, toes apart, and lie down on your tummy. Chin on the mat, hands to the sides. Now, there's two ways that you can do this posture, so I'm going to show you both that, um, that we enjoy. So, keeping your hands alongside your chest, try not to let your elbows flare out. Tuck your elbows in. Curl the toes in. Deep breath in. And out. Breathe in, straight to the arms. Lift the chest off the ground. Try to keep your arms as straight as you can manage. Don't lock your elbows, okay? You're wanting to keep your arms quite soft but strong. Raise the head, look up toward the ceiling. Don't overcrown your neck, you don't want to hurt yourself. Just take it as far as it is comfortable for you. Try to relax your hips. You're going to feel a really nice stretch. Now, if you're feeling strong, lift your knees up off the ground, keeping the curls tucked in, and look up. 
Okay, another a variation of that. Keeping your toes pointed, feet flat, elbows tucked in. As you breathe in, lift up off the ground. And then lift your knees, look up. If you prefer the toes curled in, it's completely up to you. Breathe. your knees, bend the elbows, lower your chest, relax the feet as the closed toes were curled in and rest the hands to the sides. Try not to rest on your cheek, rather rest on the chin or on your forehead, keeping the neck and the spine in a straight line. Moving into recovery, hands alongside the chest, stretching up, push back, big toes together, knees wide, buttocks down onto your heels, reach the arms right forward, tucking the head down, breathe. Come up onto your knees and slowly stand. Now this next posture is called Yoga Mudra Asana, very simple posture. We're going to start with the heels together, toes apart, and let's sit cross-legged on the mat. Now, in this posture, it's not a lotus position, it's a normal Padma Asana position. With gentlemen, your right leg will remain on the outside. With ladies, it will be your left leg on the outside. Sit up as straight as you can. Arms up, place your thumbs inside the palms of your hands, wrap your fingers over the thumbs, and bring your knuckles together. Using this motion, not your elbows, this motion here, you'll notice that the wrists are moving. You're going to place your knuckles just below the navel and push into the abdomen. Here we're wanting to massage the bowel. Keep massaging, breathe in, and out while you're massaging fold at the hip and tuck the head down as low as you can go deepening that massage Close to the buttocks as you can, reach for your ankles and hold. 
whole tight. Now, if you feel you're comfortable resting on your toes like so, and that's also fine. Personally, I prefer to have my feet flat on the ground. I just feel that I'm more grounded um, and I've got a lot more support with my feet flat on the floor. Now, next stage, clench your buttocks, lift the pelvis off the ground, and squeeze the shoulder blades together. In this position, a lot of people tend to open their knees up. Try to keep your knees sort of parallel to each other, pushing the pelvis up as high as you can. If you wish to stay in this position, that's fine. Moving on to our next step, press against your elbows and lift up onto the crown of your head. Release the right hand, place it next to the right ear. Left hand next to the left ear. Final movement, straighten the arms, lift right up and hold. Stretch the hands above the head. Breathe out, swing forward, reach for your toes. And sit. Namaste, go to Shadalim. Thank you very much for joining me today.